to you by CSGEF program on the future of Gulf and global security and development. This documentary peels back the layers of Kissinger's illustrious career, unveiling a fresh understanding of his journey and the indelible marks he left on our present and future. Through a blend of personal narratives, riveting archival footage and expert insights, we illuminate the pivotal role Kissinger played in crafting today's geopolitical landscape. Step aboard the Kissinger Voyage and embark on an enthralling exploration of statesmanship and diplomacy. The Cradle Germany, 1923 A diplomatic giant was born in the small town of Firth, Germany on May 27, 1923. Henry Kissinger embarked on a remarkable journey from the cradle of his homeland to shaping the global stage. City College and Manhattan, 1938 Henry's early years in Manhattan marked the beginning of his intellectual pursuits. Attending City College in 1938, immersed in the city's diverse culture and laid the groundwork for his future endeavors. The Army Following his service in the U.S. Army, Kissinger's experiences shaped his perspective on international relations. Harvard Rebel Schooler, 1947 Kissinger earned a reputation at Harvard as a rebel scholar, challenging conventional wisdom. This rebellious spirit laid the foundation for his later groundbreaking diplomatic strategies. The Peers of the Realm Kissinger's Realism So from, from the very beginning, uh, Kissinger was, was a scholar based all his analysis on realism. Uh, for, for Kissinger, there were no really other actors other than the States, which is very much a realist approach. And he also believed in power and he could do anything in order to achieve the national interest. I mean, this is really, you know, the, 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 the hard values and principles of realism as one, not only of the practitioners, but also theoreticians huh, of realism. Kissinger's realism became a hallmark of his diplomatic approach. Grounded in pragmatism, he navigated the complex landscape of international relations with a keen understanding of power dynamics. And I would say even classical realism, despite the fact that uh, in his analysis, obviously, uh, he had a lot of structural realist points. So he was a realist, not only a pragmatist, but also in international relations, a realist. And this is why he achieved so much. I mean, detente. Uh, I mean, he was the architect of detente. Uh, if you see the way that he had, you know, uh, the... the uh, the policy of solving the problem in Vietnam, the unsolvable solvable problem. Uh, it was, he solved it single-handedly with a great move by approaching China. He has done so many great things. Of course, 
he did some not so great things as well. But but again, I think that his legacy as a realist and as a person that tried uh, to really safeguard and promote the national interest of his country uh, is going to be great. He will never be forgotten for sure. The Architect of Detente As the architect of Detente, Kissinger played a pivotal role in thawing Cold War tensions. His strategic brilliance brought about a new era of diplomatic relations between the United States and the Soviet Union. Vietnam and the Paris Peace Negotiations Kissinger's involvement in the peace negotiations, Vietnam War, showcased his dedication. His secret negotiations with North Vietnamese officials paved the way for Paris Peace Accords in 1973, which aimed to bring an end to the conflict. His diplomatic efforts were instrumental in achieving a ceasefire and establishing a framework for the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Vietnam. Cambodia and Operation Breakfast Operation Breakfast in Cambodia underscored Kissinger's willingness to make tough decisions. He engaged in secret negotiations with Chinese officials and eased tensions in the region. His military strategy showcased the complexities of diplomacy during turbulent times. China, 1972 Kissinger's secret diplomacy paved the way for normalizing relations between the US and China. His renowned visit to Beijing in 1971 paved the way for the groundbreaking meeting between President Richard Nixon and Chinese leader Mao Zedong in 1972. The meeting fostered a strategic reapproachment that helped ease Cold War tensions and reshape the global balance of power. Europe Henry Kissinger's involvement in the strategic arms limitation talks played a key role in fostering detente between the United States and the Soviet Union. The SALT I in 1972 marked significant steps towards reducing the nuclear arms race and promoting stability between the two superpowers. Kissinger negotiated the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty as part of an effort to control their arms race in nuclear weapons. The two sides reasoned that limiting defensive systems would reduce the need to build more or new offensive weapons to overcome any defense that the other might deploy. It committed us to a firm link between offensive and defensive limitations. The Greeks, and I am a Greek, and I can tell you that, you know, uh, they really do not like uh, Kissinger at all, at all. Of course, they don't like also Metternich, but they don't like Kissinger at all. Why? Because of his role in prompting, you know, the dictatorship in Greece but also his role as regards the Turkish invasion of Cyprus. Uh, so, again, this is, this is attributed to Henry Kissinger. But the worst is in Latin America, because in Latin America, uh, both in the dictatorship of Chile and in the dictatorship of Argentina, dictatorships that are responsible for, for thousands of people that, that died, uh, you know... Yom Kippur War and Shuttle Diplomacy The Yom Kippur War presented a diplomatic crisis. 
you could see that uh, uh, he achieved that, for example, in the shuttle uh, diplomacy uh, after you know uh, Yom Kippur War, uh, which was was a masterpiece. I mean, he has ma many masterpieces, you know, in in in, in general. Uh, he was very assertive. We have to do uh, to say this as well. So uh, it was not you know an, an easy guy to negotiate with. Probably the only person that gave him a hard time uh, was uh, you know uh, Hafez al Assad at the point, which is very interesting because he he. Uh, 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 he actually said that this was a hard negotiation. Uh, nonetheless, he was very, very assertive. This was the characteristic. And at a point, uh, we can say that he was the most important statesman in the United States or in the world without having been uh, a president. Kissinger's shuttle diplomacy, crisscrossing the Middle East, demonstrated his tireless efforts to broker peace in the region. And this is probably taken from his role model. And his role, role model was Metternich. So he had written about Chancellor Metternich. You know, uh, really, that was, that was you know, the, the, uh, the best diplomat he could think of. And he tried to imitate. And Metternich was also very assertive. And he was more important than the Habsburg with the king. Kissinger felt that the late King Faisal was deserving of his impeccable reputation. He was as honorable as he was subtle, he remarked. He was meticulous in the words he spoke. He never spoke meaninglessly. With the Shah, amidst the complexities of the Middle East, Kissinger's alliance with the Shah of Iran reflected in ability to navigate geopolitical intricacies. The Ascendancy of Brent Scowcroft The later years of Kissinger's government service saw the ascendancy of Brent Scowcroft, a close collaborator. Their partnership further influenced U.S. foreign policy. With the President Within Richard Nixon's close group, Henry Kissinger was one of the few people who could be trusted. So, if you wanted to solve a problem in the United States, both during the Nixon and Ford administration, you should not talk to the president. You should talk to Henry Kissinger. And this is, I would say, not even rare, almost impossible in a presidential system as in the United States. So, yes, very, very assertive. Good leader. This faith, along with Kissinger's cerebral weight and skillful use of power, made him an important figure during a turbulent time in American history. And again, always in the United States, the power lays with the president. However, the, if the president really trusts you so much, that he can give you, you know, a, a blank check, carte blanche, to really move on with your policies, this is exceptional. And this was the relation with Kissinger. They really listened to Kissinger. It was not, it was not even important. Even if he, if he, if, if when he were, you know, the, 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 the advisor, not the Secretary of State, still he was extremely important to the President. And we have to understand that, you know, more than a friend, more more than a confidant, he was really the person that would decide, and that was granted from the president. It is not it is not something that you can grab, you can take. So the president really, really trusted Henry Kissinger, and he did not disappoint. The Trilateral Commission Post-government service, Kissinger's involvement in the Trilateral Commission underscored his commitment to fostering international cooperation and economic stability. Kissinger's Associates The founding of Kissinger Associates marked a new chapter. His consultancy firm allowed him to continue shaping global affairs through private sector diplomacy. The Legacy 
Henry Kissinger is a statesman who transformed from a German refugee to a key player in global diplomacy. His strategic brilliance, realism and enduring legacy influence today's world.